Hey guys, Blades of God here from Hammer Bros Gaming. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get through Chapter 7 of Dead Space on Impossible Difficulty for the Epic Tier 3 Engineer Achievement Guide. This is Part 7 in the Achievement Series. I've covered all six chapters up to this point. Uh, if you, this is the first video that you've seen in the series, I'm not going to be talking about how to do the basics of the game, such as using Kinesis or Stasis or waypoints or anything like that. This is going to be a survival guide that talks about how to get through combat encounters and where to find certain items or where there'll be supplies for you to help you along your way. Anyway, once we get off the tram, we're going to investigate the opening area. There is quite a bit of stuff to find, including a power node before we go through the first door. Once we come into the mining, I guess the staging area, you're going to have a left and a right side that you can investigate. There is a lot of stuff. There's a store on the right, a bench on the left. If you have some nodes, make sure you swing by the bench and upgrade. You can see here I upgraded my rig uh, for max HP at this point, and I was just checking to see what else I had for future upgrades available. We're going to come up to the elevator, activate the elevator, and at this point you want to make sure that you have your health pretty well topped off. Uh, I go down, you don't have to do this, but I am in pretty good shape with ammunition and health, so I go right down to the bottom floor first to clean up a fight that I would have to do later. When you're on this elevator, you are going to get jumped by four necromorphs. There is not a lot of room to do any fighting or maneuvering in here, so try to keep your back to a wall. Um, don't stand in the middle of the platform because you will get hit. Thankfully, they drop in one at a time. Uh, by and large, the last two come in at pretty close to the same time. You can use stasis like I do here. I actually was trying to have that stasis blast hit the ground in between the two necromorphs to freeze both of them. And you can see here I decided to use a little bit more stasis, buy myself some time, and just take them out one at a time. I took out both of their legs to slow them down. Um, and then by the time stasis wears off, they're both dead. So gather up whatever supplies you can off of the dead bodies. We're going to wait for the elevator to bring us down to the bottom floor. Like I said, you don't have to go to the bottom floor first, but there is a fight here. So because I had quite a bit of ammunition and health, I decided to do that now instead of later. So as soon as you get off the elevator, hustle down to the left, the left ramp and try to take out these mutators or these... Uh, infecting units before they can turn too many of the corpses. I didn't think that the second one was going to come around that quickly and it ends up jumping on me and does quite a bit of damage. It brings me down to about half health, but the nice trade-off is that if you succeed in the button mashing sequence, it's an instant kill on those. So that, I mean, take it as you will. Sometimes it's a worthwhile trade, but sometimes it's not. So they were only able to infect or turn two of the corpses in this area and I took them both out. They were the darker necromorphs that deal more damage and take more damage to kill. Um, I take a minute to look around, gather up whatever supplies I could find, and then heal up before heading back up the ramp, or up the elevator, uh, to the second, or would it be the third? No, it's level B. So in the story, or in the level, you actually have to go to level B before you can proceed down to the bottom floor, but we did things a little out of order here, as I already explained. So we're going to come down this hallway to the left, and you're going to get jumped by... Well, normally you'd get jumped. This time the Necromorph wasn't aware of me, I got the drop on him. Shoe was on the other foot, so to speak, and then I had a Necromorph drop in behind me. And this fight goes a little by the wayside, it, it doesn't go great. Um, I have a carrier unit charging me that I stasis, and then we have another Necromorph drop in that I forgot about. So. He rushes me, he does his blind berserker rush, uh, I take out his legs to stop him and then kill him, and thankfully the carrier was still stasis. unfortunately I didn't kill the carrier fast enough, so it unloaded its payload of flippers. I tried to run up here and stop them, but when I did that, another necromorph came around the corner, and of course the stasis wore off on the flipper swarm as I was shooting at him. For whatever reason, the necromorph missed me with his lunge attack, by all rights I should have been dead. So I healed up and booked it to give myself a little more space. The Necromorph's still coming. And uh, yeah, it was by the just luck of the draw. It was by stupid blind luck that I didn't get killed right there. But ideally what you would want to do is kind of kite those enemies back to where you first came up on the elevator. Um, use that hallway as a choke point and kind of stop yourself from getting overwhelmed like I did there. 
Anyway, once all of the enemies are dead, we're going to look around in the hallways and on the platform for any supplies. Come into this room and this hallway. There's one enemy here. I didn't bother slowing down the footage because it was just a one standard necromorph. Come to the store. Sell off what you don't need. I never keep air cans because you really don't need them. So, sold that off. Sold off the unneeded ammunition or the uncompatible ammunition types. Checking what I have for ammo there. And then coming down to the hole that's ripped in the wall to get into the next next part. Um, this room can be very tricky. I have died in this room multiple times. And to be honest, there's no real simple way. You get rushed by quite a few enemies, the lurkers and the jumpers. And you can't lure them through this wall or this invisible barrier like the one that I'm showing you. You see that lurker, that, uh, not lurker, that jumper just looked at me and said, nope, not going in there, and he went the other way. So, there's no easy way to kite them, uh, because they can all jump around fairly well in the zero G. So, what I do is I kind of stick my head out here, come into the room, try to do some damage to one of them, but you have three jumpers that are rushing you right now. So, I take out one, and then I go back through the wall, or back through the hole in the wall, so they sort of dissipate, go away a little bit and give me a little bit of breathing room. I give him a second, kind of look to see if I can get any shots on anyone, but there's none there, so I head back through. You see he just jumped back over again, so I'm going to take and do a little bit more damage. And you can kind of repeat this process where you poke your head out, take a few shots. There I saw that there was two of the jumpers close together, so I decided to stasis them. Um, and by all means, use your stasis. Stasis is your friend. It will definitely help get you through some, some of these trickier fights. Uh, but make sure you keep an eye on your indicator because the last thing you want to do is go to hit something with a stasis blast and realize you don't have any have any in reserve. So anyway, once you clean up all four of the jumpers, the game tasks you with removing these, uh, I don't know, meteor chunks, boulders, whatever. Um, before you do that, try to grab whatever supplies you can from the room. You can see I'm jumping around and normally there's a couple of boxes that you can grab that have supplies in them. After you take out a couple of the boulders, you're actually going to have lurkers, the little baby forms that have three tentacles in their back, come out and try to get you. So keep moving because they will set up right there. You can see that one of them was shooting at me, another one just came motoring on through. Um, and at this point, the, the lurkers shouldn't be much of a challenge. I mean, you know to wait until the tentacles pop out of their back, strafe left and right to avoid their ranged attack. Don't let them get close or they will lunge on you and drain your health almost to nothing. But once the lurkers are dead, grab the ammo or whatever supplies they happen to drop. And again, I had one more boulder to find, so throwing that into the gravity well to get rid of it. Oh, two more. Okay. Once all the anom- or I don't remember what the voice says, the anomalous objects or whatever. Once they're all thrown into the gravity well, you can proceed with the level. You're going to come down here to where the- um, uh, what is it? The gravity controls are. And behind the gravity controls, there is actually a room that you can unlock using a power node. And this is why I always keep a power node on me. When you go into this room, there is a bunch of supplies on the ground. But that's not the real reason I would highly recommend unlocking this room. Once you activate the gravity, you get rushed by another wave of enemies. And instead of having to fight them out there on the gantry or on the walkways, they will come in using the vents, and for whatever reason, this walking grenade was, like, not dying. I blew him up, cut off his tail, shot his arm, and he just refused to die, so that was interesting. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the enemies are going to drop in pretty much one at a time here, and it's you can't get surrounded. No enemies are going to spawn behind you. You can use the audio cues to figure out... How many enemies are left outside the only enemy that's not going to come through there's one carrier form out in that room and he will not go through the vents but the standard necromorphs will the walking grenades or the I, I don't know what else to call them the walking grenade enemies are going to come through the vents you can see some movement out through that grate there and they you can just wait here until you don't hear any other enemies out there so, here you can see I had two drop in back to back, but that's about as close to two enemies at once as you'll get. Um, it's very manageable. Again, you can use stasis to slow them down. And the 
added added bonus to this room is that after you kill everything all you're gonna have a bunch of supplies that or items loot I guess that the enemies dropped from being killed all in one place and there's going to be a fair amount of it in fact you'll see after I pick everything up that I'd say there was almost as much from the dead enemies as there was in this supply room so credits lots of ammo um, there was a med pack I mean it's really a worthwhile use of a power note to get in here and really stock up on a lot of stuff so I can hear that there's one enemy left I'm sort of seeing if he's right outside the grate I don't see any movement turns out he's way at the other end of this walkway one carrier form not a big deal to take out hit him with stasis cut off his legs and arms before the stasis runs out so he's dead um, again if you, this is not new information to anybody who's playing on impossible difficulty or even made it to this point in the game but if you don't kill them before the stasis runs out they release a flipper swarm as you saw earlier in the level so stasis them arms legs cut off and hopefully the state the flippers don't come out because those things especially when there's other enemies around are a pain in the butt to deal with so go back to the store sell off a bunch of your loot that you don't need uh, buy up some power nodes if you have enough credits and then we can advance to the next room where we are looking for our objective some items on the ground and in the boxes no enemies in here so nothing to really worry about once you grab what you're looking for you're gonna go through the door on the right hand side there's a blue box with power node make sure you grab that it's easy to miss and there's a little bit of a jump scare right here you can see I look up because I was expecting something to come through the, the roofs patch but nothing came down so now we're backtracking we're back in the uh, the room where the fight almost went sideways on me and you're gonna get jumped again right there by a jumper and I slowed it down just because he takes a lot of damage like he takes a lot more he takes many more shots than I had anticipated and I don't he wasn't one of the darker varieties he was just a standard jumper but he really took a beating so we're back on the main elevator we're going all the way back down to the bottom floor we've already cleared out all the enemies here so we know we don't have a fight as soon as we get off the elevator uh, this stuff the biomass that's on the wall and floor slows you down a lot when you try to walk through it you can see this guy's having a really rough day tried to hit him couldn't do it so decide eh just stick around not that you have much of a choice go ahead and save your game right here this part can get very challenging um, it's not particularly hard but because you're stuck on another gondola and you can't move you can take a lot of damage if you don't know what you're doing I grabbed one of those explosive canisters before I started just to save a shot and what's gonna happen is as this gondola moves very slowly down the rail on the left and the right you're going to have the little pods that the wall huggers uh, pop out coming out of the wall to shoot at you the nice thing about this as opposed to the wall hugger pods is that as soon as their tentacle comes up you can damage them um, there's some items on that the two platforms that they come out on that you can grab don't spend too much time trying to grab them sometimes the angle is a little funny and your kinesis can't quite get it and if you get too too bad of tunnel vision focusing on the items you're gonna end up getting shot in the back and get it's just not good because you got another pretty big fight coming up you can see there's an item down there that I tried to grab and I couldn't uh, once you get to the end of the gondola ride you're going to have a cutscene that you just you can't skip you're stuck in the gondola listening to your girlfriend yammer at you about how she can help you um, there's a bunch of supplies in this room just getting you ready for the upcoming fight so we're gonna go in here and now you have to protect her she's gonna work on the computer terminal across this chasm you can't get over there so you have to keep all the different types of necromorphs off of her as she is working on that computer there is an explosive canister that I grab to use on the first necromorph that shows up and there it is and there it goes you can see it even threw the item all the way over here but there's not a lot to say about this it's almost like a rail shooter where you can't advance or really move anywhere you can move back and forth but it doesn't help you because all the enemies come to attack her on the other side of this gap you can use stasis to slow them down if they're starting to overwhelm her uh, 
But again, it's just, you've got, I think it's four or five Necromorphs, and eventually a Lurker comes up the wall on the left. So you can see I'm trying really hard. Whoop, one does come up and try to get you. Um, trying really hard to keep them away from her and not letting them close on her because it doesn't take many hits for her to die, especially on Impossible. So don't be afraid to use Stasis. They're going to drop a lot of items over there that we're going to pick up using our Kinesis afterwards. Don't try to pick up all the items. Like that one just threw an item down into the, into the ditch, but not a big deal. Um, don't try to pick up the items as you're fighting because you just you don't have time So I tried to stasis that lurker. I missed my shot He did use a range attack on her that hit her but not a big deal that lurker signals the end of this sort of area uh, It's the last enemy to spawn so you can see we're gonna grab As many items as we can from the far side if there's bodies in the way just drag them over and drop them into the ditch to get them out of the way I'm looking around just to see if there's anything on the walls that I missed and grab the objective from that next room, grab the power node. I'm going to check my health and all my supplies, see where I'm at, and then come back over here. I decide to pull the last couple enemies out of the way and lo and behold, look, extra plasma cutter ammo and extra plasma cutter ammo. So it definitely takes, or it's definitely worthwhile to move all the dead bodies. Once you have the objective in hand, you're going to double back on yourself, get back on the gondola, and ride it back in the other direction. This time, not only do we have the pods that are going to shoot at you, but we actually have a couple of lurkers that show up. One on the left side and one on the right side. Uh, the nice thing is that just like our normal strategy of strafing left and right to avoid getting hit, the lurkers are not good at hitting a moving target, so the fact that the gondola is continuously moving, if the lurker is closer to perpendicular to where you're standing um, then the shot is more or less always going to miss the further back or forwards on the rail or on the uh, path of the lurker is the less the angle is going to be for the lurker shot so the more likely you're going to get hit so right here you can see i've got a lurker that's pretty close to being right even with me if he throws at me odds are the gondola's movement is going to cause the shot to miss so i don't have to worry about moving left and right um even the the pods that popped out back there i didn't even realize there was one behind me but i never got hit because the gondola's movement got me out of the shot's way so this i did mess up on i didn't realize there was two necromorphs waiting at the end of this gondola for me. I tried to stasis them, but I was out of stasis, so I just started laying into them with the plasma cutter to buy myself some room. And I would recommend keeping your stasis full. I don't know why I never refilled my stasis at this point, but I didn't. And I paid for it because I got hit by the necromorphs. Anyway, grab whatever supplies you can off of those rails. You see I grabbed a small med kit. I'm gonna use those to heal up. I had a stasis recharge in my kit and I didn't use it. This is the guy who's having a hard day, and I decided to help him out, put him out of his misery, because, well, it was the right thing to do. I saved my data here just because I don't want to have to redo that part if I happen to die, which I don't plan on doing, but you never know. Uh, you're back in the biomass room at the bottom of the elevator shaft. As you come up this ramp, you do get jumped by a necromorph who is playing possum. And I didn't see him because there was a dead body kind of hiding him from my view, but I don't know if I would have picked up on the fact that he was an enemy even if I did see him so once you kill him we're back in the elevator we're going to head to level C which was previously locked so this is a whole new level we haven't been to this part of the or not a whole new level it's a whole new floor of this level that we haven't been to yet uh, you're gonna the visibility in here is very limited normally what I would do is actually just book it to one of the rooms on the left or the right side and then take the enemies out from there but I didn't make it there this time, so I'm kind of putting my back to the wall and trying to take out the enemies without getting surrounded. You could also back into that hallway where the elevator was, just so you don't get surrounded, but I chose not to do either one of those things, and I got hit a couple of times, and I got hit by the surprise lurker that I didn't realize was right next to me. So once you clear out all of these enemies, which again, it's two, uh, I believe it's two necromorphs who are crawling and then two lurkers once they're dead you're going to want to go to the right side uh, well and check your room for ammo and supplies obviously because there's a couple of boxes but you're going to want to go to the uh oh i'm wrong the left side 
because that's where the power, the battery, I don't know what you call it, the, the power source is that you're going to need. This box, you want to stomp it instead of shooting it because there's flippers inside. Come up here, grab your, uh, grab your supplies out of the boxes and off the crate. There is a bench and a store here that that power node or power uh, brick is keeping active. If you pull that, then the store and the uh, the store goes dormant. So if you want to go to the store, do that before you pull the power core. Um, do your normal thing. Sell off any non-compatible ammo types. Buy up anything you need, whether it be health packs, ammo, power nodes to upgrade your equipment. Visit the bench, and I slow down my gameplay here because when you use this bench, I max out my pulse rifle, and then when you close it, you get ambushed by a necromorph who is standing right next to you. It's supposed to be a jump scare. He doesn't attack you right away. He just screams right in your face, but I was ready for it, so didn't catch me off guard, but it's definitely something that if you haven't played through the game multiple times, you'll probably forget about, and it will jump you, so wanted to give you the heads up on that. Anyway, once you've used the store and the bench, go ahead and grab this power core and kind of walk it. You're going to walk it through the smoky or the dusty room to the other side. Uh, you can definitely launch it across instead of carrying it like this. There are enemies in here. You'll actually see I launch it at an enemy and hit him. Once you do that, fall back into this room because you want visibility. It's a little easier to see these enemies because the walking grenades, their arm glows. So even in the dust or the smoke or whatever it is, they're easier to see. But still, it's better than getting surrounded. You know all the enemies are coming from that room. So use the doorway as a choke point and just keep yourself safe. I go into this room, I find something, and I'm pretty sure during the stream that I captured this footage with, I looked at that and I said, hmm, well that should be significant, but it never actually amounts to anything. It's just a circle of arms. So we put the power core in, that's going to activate the elevator, we're going to take the elevator down, and this hallway, there's no enemies in it right now, um, but there is a recharge station for your stasis and quite a few supplies both on the ground and in the wall lockers. So make sure you pick up everything, I think there's three on the left as you're coming down the hall and three on the right for wall lockers and then a um, semiconductor or conductor on the floor at the end. So now we're in the big room that has the gravity tethers. Uh, this room, when you enter, is safe. I don't believe there's any enemies that show up until after you activate, after you shoot the gravity tether. Once you shoot the gravity tether, you have, I believe it's three jumpers who come after you. And again, these things love zero G. They fly around like it's nobody's business, so keep moving. Um, they're the darker variants, the stronger variants, so they do take quite a bit to put down. I actually get snuck up on one right there and take a hit. So you can see I'm I'm just taking my time, trying to take the arms off of them, and they just love to jump around and make your life difficult. So once they're dead, grab the ammo off their bodies. The nice thing is they're always, almost always good for dropping some sort of supply. You can see the credits floating there that I'm going to grab. And I hear another one, so I'm looking, and... This is such a big dark room and they have darker skin that it's tough to uh, keep track of them because they blend in really, really well. So that's why I could hear the enemy, but I couldn't see him, so I just started moving. It's a lot harder to get hit, a lot harder for the enemy to hit you if you're constantly on the move. So it's a good piece of advice. When in doubt, keep moving. So after we take out the... Uh, two gravity tethers. I look around to see if there's any boxes or floating supplies that I can see. I don't see any other than that one box. Come down to the floor and I look at these two arms. You want to wait until they move and come to the bottom left corner from the floor. The bottom left corner and the top right corner are going to be your safe zones that you're going to go and do your little spacewalk on. When you come out to outside of the asteroid to plant your beacon, there's going to be one lurker who's waiting for you on top of the asteroid just kind of hanging out in zero G with no oxygen like eh. No big deal. Once you plant your beacon, you're going to jump down to the surface of the Ishimura and take out the two external gravity tethers. I was feeling pretty awesome because I'd hit the first two inside without needing to use stasis on it to slow it down. When you take out the gravity tether, you're going to have another lurker come after you. I don't know if it's a proximity thing that triggers it or if it's when you actually take out the gravity tether because I could see the explosion from the tether actually pushed him back. So I'm assuming it's when you get close to the tether it spawns the lurker. 
Once you take out the lurker, hoof it over to the other tether. You could, of course, use your jump to get on the meteor and then jump again, but I just go for a stroll and use stasis, slow it down, shoot in between the, I don't know what you want to call it, armor or the plating. Um, you don't need to rush too, too much here. I've upgraded my air a little bit, I believe, so I have a little bit of extra oxygen, a little bit of extra time, but even just leisurely walking from one spot to the other in zero G with no oxygen, I still have almost 25, I don't know what you want to call it, seconds, units of air left in my tank. So it's not, oxygen shouldn't be a big issue for you. If it is, you can always hop on the asteroid, come back around to the inside to refill your air, and you'll be all set. So anyway, once you take out all four gravity tethers, you're pretty much done with this area, so you're going to backtrack into this hallway where we had all the supplies. Uh, there's one enemy, one crawling necromorph right here, so I didn't slow down the footage just for that one enemy. I mean, you could almost really get away with just stomping on him if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it because you're on impossible, but hey, it's your playthrough, it's your call. Do it if you want. We're back on the elevator, and instead of just having a dusty room now, now we have a fiery room. Uh, I don't, because you walk slower while you're carrying things with Kinesis, I actually just launch it through the fire to the other side so I can move quicker, um, or more quickly. Grab it, and you're going to actually plug it back in, slot it back into where it originally was to activate the other elevator on this side. Come back around, I'm going to come up to the store again, because it never hurts to offload any of the stuff you don't need. So there's a semiconductor, some ammo, um, and I grab a couple power nodes, which... You know, you can always use more power nodes. At this point, I don't know what I was doing there. Just trying to see if I could grab rocks out of the rocks out of the air, I guess. Seeing if the environment was stagnant. I mean, I knew it was, but it was something fun to try. Alright, so we're going to come up the elevator. We're going to come into this room, which is going to be the control room for the meteor. Or the asteroid that was being mined. Uh, I don't even know if it was that or if it was just part of the planet that was being mined. But... We're going to take, and just like we've done in the previous chapter, we're going to actually bust all of the arms and legs off of the corpses in this room. Um, I thought there was going to be a reanimator enemy that drops in when I activate, when I release the asteroid, but there isn't. There's just standard necromorphs and the stronger version of the necromorphs. Um, this room can be stressful. They drop in from different areas. I think there's a total of four or five necromorphs. And it's very easy to get surrounded. The best thing you could do is just keep your back to the wall near the door where you came in. I don't do that in this run. I get a little, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little full of myself. So I advance and as you can see, I just had an enemy drop in behind me. I turned to deal with him. I had another enemy drop in behind me. I start panicking a little bit because I got hit again. So another enemy dropped in behind me. That's four enemies, three of which came in behind me and got the drop on me. So I panic and just start unloading with the pulse rifle, aiming for the legs, trying to cut them down to size. Again, stasis is your best friend here. Tight In tight areas like this where you need to buy yourself time, use the stasis and you know buy yourself the breathing room you need. You'll know that the fight's over when the shutters go back up. That's when you know you're safe to heal, check your inventory, do whatever you got to do. In that room, there is actually a... Uh, you can see that blue box right there. There's a power node in there. Make sure you grab it. When you walk out, there's three flippers on the ground. I didn't want to waste the ammo or try stomping on them and risk the health. So I just kind of kited them around the table and ran by them. Perfectly valid strategy. Works fine. Definitely, again, your choice. Do whatever you want. Um, I come back down to the bench. I have four power nodes in my inventory. I use three of them to upgrade because I always keep one power node on my person at all times for the... Uh, supply rooms that require power nodes to open and once we're done with that we're going to head back to the main elevator head back up to level a you do get jumped by one more necromorph right here and it is a more powerful standard necromorph so you know what to do you can use stasis if you've got to just hit him in the legs until he falls and then take an arm off and that usually is enough to kill him all the way up to the top there's another store and another bench here if you've got to use them if not, we're going to continue to backtrack all the way to the tram, hop on board, activate it, and that is it. Chapter 7 is in the books. Hope this guide helped, guys. We have five more chapters to go. Until next time, take care. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. You can also check us out on Twitch at Hammer Bros Gaming. 
I am Blades of God, and until next time, have a great day, everyone.